it a little bit. Hello, teacher. Hello, Anayasi. Good evening. How was your weekend, guys? Was it good? All right, guys, uh, before we start the class, I would like to ask you, can you guys hear me like clearly? Is there any, any, any interference or something? No, can you guys hear me clearly? Great, okay, very good. So I hope that you have enjoyed your weekend. I know that we are about to complete this module, guys. We just have, with this class, we just have three more classes and we are going to be done, okay? So uh, did you work on the, on the platform? That's right. I saw that most of you complete um, till number four and some of you are still going on with the last part. So I'm very proud of that. So thank you so much for keeping working on that. So um, what can you guys tell me about the last class? What can you guys tell me about it? ¿Qué cuáles eran las tareas pendientes, teacher? No, uh, I'm asking you about the last class. What do you remember about the last class? Sports, all right. Perfect. So let me ask you, uh, Ana Yancy, can you tell me what happened when we use the verb go? With which sports do we use the verb go? Is it women? Like bowling? But the explanation? Explicación. How would you explain me about that? ¿Cómo me lo explicarías? Mm. Part of the bird go. Eh, todos aquellos que terminan con ing. With the ing form. Okay, very good. So what about mm -hmm. you, Mr. Elvis? How do we use the bird play? Eh, we use for the sports. Cuando el deporte incluye un objeto, una pelota, o cuando es una competición. All right, includes an object such as ball, disc, and things like that, and also competition. Very good. So, what about you, Ana Maria? What can you tell me about the verb uh, do? How do we use the verb do in sports? Los, en los, que, los que son generalmente individuales y implican actividades recreativas. Exactly. Now, uh, can you give me an example? A las personas que les pregunté, can you guys give me an example of each one of the sports? Elvis and Ana Maria, because Ana Yancy already gave me her example. An example for play is like football, basketball, hockey, very, tennis. Excellent. Very good. How about you, Ana Maria? Um, okay. With you, was ballet, um, 
like karate, karate. Yes, as well. Very um, good. That's it. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> All right. Yes, thank you. Uh, now for the other ones, guys. Um, let me see. Do I have uh, do I have any exception, Claudia Iraeta? Is there any exception with uh, with the sports? Do I have any exception using some verbs? There is or there is not. Can you tell me? There, there is, there is. Okay, what are those exceptions? What are those? What are those? The exception is when practice boxing. Uh, uh, the other example is practice golf. Golf. Los que, uh, son los que yo recuerdo que se mencionaron que eran como las reglas. Okay, and what happened with that, uh, Brenda Villeda? What happened with those? With boxing, with golf, ¿cuál es la excepción en sí? Which verbs do we use? ¿Cuáles verbos utilizamos como excepción? ING. ING, okay. Ah, el do. 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 Yes. And what about golf? The other ones? What happened with golf? Teacher. Elia. Okay. Tell me. Golf se usa el play, pero cuando va a ser como para competir, algo así, entendí yo. Exactly. What else? <laughs> ¿Qué más? What else? Y también en la otra que dijo de, de boxing. No sé cómo se pronuncia, pero es lo que como que hace en pesa, body. Bodybuilding. Ajá. Ahí se va a usar el do. For you guys, for everyone, para todos. A question. Uh -huh. Can uh -huh. I use another verb with the sport golf in the exception? Elias already said that we use play, the verb play with the sport golf. When we have kind of a competition, so my question for you is, can I use another verb such as do or go? Can I or I can't? I well, can't. Como que nos dejó algo dormidos el weekend, vea. Todavía agarrando señal. So, can I or I can't? For everyone, para todos. This is a question for every one of you. Can I use another verb? Elias just said that we can use the verb play when we have a reference about a competition. But what if, uh, uh, what if we did not have a competition? ¿Qué pasa si no hay competición? Can I use another verb? Yes, you can. Which one? Go. Go. Oh. And why, go. why can I use go? ¿Por qué debo de usar go? And use what? Activities and sport. Activities and sports, yes, but what else? ¿Qué más me da la idea de utilizar go? Um, si lo hace por, por diversión o algo así, o sea, no es competición, sino como un entretenimiento. Exacto. Oh, to practice. To practice and remember that. Remember that last time I told you guys that we use the verb go when we go to the place we are going to practice. Utilizamos go porque vamos a ir al lugar 
Salimos a un lugar a practicar el sport. Okay, so in general, how do we say, guys, uh, balón mano? How do we say that? Handball. Handball, very good. How do we say uh, artes marciales? Martial arts. Martial arts. Martial arts. Very good. And how do we how do we make the difference between the word football and soccer? What's the difference between they both? What is la diferencia? Which is the difference? When I say soccer and when I say football, what's the difference? Is in, that this case, in this case, the football, it, uh, we have a, a play with, with the body. With the body. Uh, the football. In the soccer, uh, I play with the foot. With the feet. Yeah, with the feet. Feet. Uh, feet. Uh -huh. Yeah, because foot, foot, if you say foot, estás refiriéndote a un pie. Foot. Uh -huh. si feet, feet feet is a plural de foot. Uh, okay. Thank you, teacher. All right. So that's very good. So another question, guys. The other ones. Uh, how do we say uh, boxeo? It's very easy. How do we say boxeo? Boxing. 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 How do we say Boxing. salto alto? How do we say high, salto alto? High jump. High jump. Very good. How do we say gymnasia? Gymnastic. 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 How do we say uh, arqueria? How do we say that? Archery. 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 Very good. How do we say um, javelina? Javelin. And the Javelin. last one. How do we say salto largo? Hardel. Long, long jump. Long, long jump. Very good. So, guys, uh, I remember that, well, I saw that some of you were sending some pictures about the exercise that we didn't complete on, on Thursday. It was like a, like a cross search or like a word search. And I saw some of you sent me the picture through the WhatsApp group. So thank you so much for the people that send uh, those pictures. And um, today we're going to complete the last activity that it was about the differences. Did you complete this exercise, guys? This one, let me share that with you. Did you did that? Did you do it? No? Mm. La pelota es diferente, teacher. The ball. The ball, yes. The ball is different. What else? The different marcador. El marcador también. Yeah. La camisa del portero, del, del árbitro. Yeah. árbitro. We got this. Las calcetas del jugador número cinco. We got this bar right here. Mm -hmm. got... mm -hmm. Number, Number five as uh -huh. well. Yeah. It's La bandera del marcador también. Una de las banderas del marcador también. And uh, a flag. Una bandera. Where is that? A flag. Sí, el que lleva uno. Mm -hmm. Son diferentes. Oh, yes. Here we have this one right here. Um, this one right here. La, so got, la camisa que es, tiene líneas horizontales y el otro vertical. 
Which one? Um, is it? Oh, this one, yes. I got it here. <laughs> so let me see how many do we got. We got one, two, three, four, five, six. We're still missing one. Todavía nos falta una. There's seven. Seven. Uh, Tiene el jugador número 12, teacher. Tiene diferentes las piernas, la posición de las piernas. Oh, excellent. Yes, and there it is. So we got seven. All right. So mm -hmm. we complete that part. So uh, that was pretty much it of this activity, guys. Today, uh, we are going to, to have a new topic. Today's topic uh, is going to be about countables and non-countable nouns. So I need you to pay attention on these guys because uh, some of you last time have had some problems when it comes to nouns because sometimes we're thinking in Spanish and obviously we think something, but in English it's not the same. So today, as I said, we're going to see countables and non-countable nouns. And to start with that, guys, we are going to, oh, we have here some of the differences or some information about it. And let me see, I will need any volunteer. Any volunteer, guys? I think we can count. A dog by pencils can be singular or plural. Would you My like best to friend in is a very... Ah, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, ¿Qué tengo que hacer, teacher? Estaba leyendo en alto, vea. Pensó que tenía... Oh, no. Perdón. Off. Yeah. Perdón. Creí que estaba en silencio. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> So if you want to read, please, and Sheila, she also said that she wants to participate. Help me reading these two points, los primeros dos puntos. Obviously, okay. since the beginning, desde el inicio okay. and last two points. Mm -hmm. Countable and um, countable nouns. Nouns in English can be countable or uncountable. Mm -hmm. Countable nouns, are these we can call a dog five pencil can be singular or plural my best friend is a very intelligent girl singular my two other friends are good at sport plural very good so guys what is the explanation over there as it says over there countable nouns los sustantivos contables Son obviamente cosas que podemos contar. Things that we can count. Okay. We have an example right there. If I say a dog, si utilizo la letra A or N, a dog is un perro or I can say five pencils. What I, what I want you to understand for this, guys, lo que quiero que entiendan es que los contables Evidentemente son cosas que vamos a poder contar. Whether it is singular o plural. Ya sea que estén singular o plural. ¿Qué quiere decir esto? Example. I have my best friend is a very intelligent girl. Estoy hablando en singular because I'm talking about just one girl. But what if I say my two other friends are good at sports? So I'm talking about two different people. Desde el momento que digo dos, I'm already talking about Pura, okay? Perfect. So Ana Maria, I see that you're reading. So help me with number three, please. <laughs> Can be used with a and a girl. The, the, the girl and number two tables and some, any, two, many, how many, a lot of, or a few, mm -hmm. the table below. Okay, thank you so much. What does that mean, guys? Significa que con los countable nouns, we are able, o vamos a ser capaces de utilizar los siguientes preposiciones, o 
eh, quantifiers. Ejemplo, A or N. Ya sabemos which is the difference between the both. Ya sabemos la diferencia entre ellas dos, ¿no? ¿Cuándo utilizo A? When do I use A? Can someone tell me? ¿Cuándo utilizo A? Cuando el sonido de la siguiente palabra comienza con una consonante. Exactly. Thank you so much, Mr. Elvis. What about N? Where or how do I use that? When a word eh, comienza con vocal. Starts with a vowel, with a vowel. Cuando la siguiente palabra. Vowel. Uh -huh. Teacher, se le oye cortado, teacher. Really? No like, a todos, porque yo sí le escucho bien. Oh. Yo también. Aquí se escucha bien también. So it's probably your internet connection. Probablemente sea la conexión que tiene cada quien, ¿verdad? So, um, as I was saying, guys, in the countable nouns, we can use the, T-H-E, the, example, the girl. We can also use numbers or numerals, such as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on, right? So we can also use some quantifiers, quantifiers such as some, any, many, how many, a lot of, or a few. We are going to see the differences right now. Example. Ahora vengo y les voy a preguntar. Ya vimos a, n, some, and n. Ya los vimos, sí o no? We already saw that. Yes or no? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Yes. Okay. Tell me. When do I have to use some? Cuando tengo que utilizar some? When do I have to use some? In affirmative sentence. Affirmative sentences. And how do I have to use any? Negative sentence and oh. question sentence. Negative sentences and questions. So there we go. We have an example over here using a noun, a countable noun. If I say, are there any seats? Hay algunos asientos? Or how many seats are there? Cuantos asientos hay? I can use those two type of questions when it comes to countable nouns. Examples in the affirmative form. Elvis, can you please help me reading this part? The affirmative part, please. Okay, affirmative. There are some seats. There are a few seats. There are a lot of seats. There are too many seats. Okay, thank you so much. What does that mean, guys? Como vimos acá en number three, in point number three, it says con, que con los contables en afirmativo podemos utilizar todas sus variantes, such as some, a few, a lot of, and too many. Ellos todos eh, son como eh, synonyms. For example, if I say there are some seats, what do you understand by that? If I say there are some seats. Hay algunos asientos. Exactly. If I say there are a few seats. Que hay pocos asientos. Hay unos pocos, a few seats, unos pocos. There are a lot of seats. What does that mean? Que hay muchos asientos. And what about there are too many seats? Que hay algunos. Exactly. As you can see, uh -huh. all of them, we can use them with countable nouns. When we have... Uh, 
negative form, we can use any or many, or we can even use the word no. En vez de utilizar el contractado, el verbo to be are not, we can simply say there are no seats. Esto, este no es neutro. ¿Sí? That's why we say there are no seats. Can you, let me see, Ana Yancy, can you please help me reading the negative form or the negative part right here? Okay. They aren't any seats. They aren't many seats. They aren't no seats. There are no seats. Very good. So now we're going to go with the uncountable nouns. This is only the introduction, guys. This is just general information. After this information, we are going to go detail by detail so you can get uh, to learn a little bit more about it, okay? So let me see. Um, Maria Luz de Nieto, hello. Can you help me reading this? three points of the uncountable nouns. Or just two, just two. Example, uh, examples. No, 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 I mean the point number one and point number two. Okay, okay. Uncountable nouns are things we can note, count, Water, like, friend, friendship, are only singular, chocolate, chocolate, wakes, wake, uh, you happy? Okay, thank you, there, thank you so much. Okay. So, as, as you can see guys, there, we, uh, uncountable nouns are things that we cannot, we cannot count, okay? Uh, I was gonna tell you something about this word, guys. It's important that you know how do we pronounce that in American English. In American English, this, um, esta palabra, can, can, in inglés americano we say can cuando nos referimos, when we refer to, Poder, for example, I can, you can, tú puedes, and so on. But in English, Americano, if we say can, si decimos can, nos estamos refiriendo a una lata. So it's very important that you know the difference about it. Porque en inglés británico no hay diferencia. En inglés británico se pronuncian las dos de la misma forma. Se dicen can cuando quieren decir poder y can cuando quieren decir lata. But in American English, it's very important that you make the difference. In inglés americano, hay que hacer la diferencia. So the next time, la próxima vez, si ven can en americano, cuando queremos decir poder, decimos can, ¿ok? Only when we want to refer o cuando queremos decir lata, vamos a decir can, okay? Keep that in mind, please. It's very important that you know both differences. So as it says over here, those uncountable nouns, guys, are things that we cannot count. Que no podemos contar, por ejemplo, cosas como amor, cosas como eh, amistad, cosas como luz, water, light, friendship, love, uh, cosas eh, abstractas, like uh, feelings, como sentimientos, things like that that we cannot count. Those are part of countable nouns. And uh, otra característica, another characteristic about uncountable nouns es que ellos no tienen forma plural. Never. They do not have plurals. Esa es la diferencia entre los contables y los incontables. Why? 
Because the countable nouns, los contables, ellos tienen plural y singular. Pero los incontables no tienen singular. Perdón, no tienen plural, solo tienen singular. So pay attention to that difference, guys. Example, we have an example right here. Chocolate. Chocolate makes you happy. ¿Qué quiere decir? Que como no tienen plural, yo no puedo decir chocolates make you happy. Aunque chocolate también puede ser usado como contable e incontable. Más adelante vamos a ver cuáles son algunos que forman parte de los dos grupos, ya sea contables e incontables. But now, uh, I will need some vol or any volunteer to help me with yes or no questions. Volunteer. Yes, teacher. Go ahead, please. Is there any milk? Is there any milk? Very oh, good. Oh, much milk is there. How much milk is there? Thank you so much. Uh, I saw that. Maria Luz de Nieto, I saw that you raised your hand. Would you like to participate? Yes. Okay, help me with the affirmative form, please. Okay, teacher. There is some milk. There is a little milk. There is a lot of milk. There is too much milk. Okay, thank you. Guys, si se fijan, En los countable utilizábamos a few. En los uncountables ya no vamos a utilizar a few. En vez de decir a few, vamos a utilizar a little. See? That's the difference. Pay attention to that, okay? En los countables también utilizábamos too many. Pero en los uncountables ya no vamos a utilizar too many, sino que too much. ¿Ok? Those are the only two differences. Estas son las únicas dos diferencias en las afirmativas. Porque de ahí some and a lot of, estas dos siempre las podemos utilizar. Ya sea countable or non-countable. Are we clear on that? ¿Estamos claros? ¿Clear? Yes. Yes, teacher. So now that you say yes, Elias, help me with the negative form, please. There isn't any milk. There isn't much milk. There is no milk. Perfect. Which is the difference, guys, that you can notice between countable and non countables? ¿Cuál es la diferencia que pueden notar en la negativa? Is there any difference? There's not. I don't know. There yes. aren't, there isn't. Many much. Many and much. There aren't, uh, ain't. Exacto. Much. ¿Alguien me puede decir por qué en los uncountable utilizamos there is y no there are? Only singular. Exactly. Porque dijimos que los uncountables, they only have singular form, not plural. Ahora viene otra pregunta. I have another question for you. Can I use there is with the countable nouns? ¿Puedo utilizarlo there is con los countable? ¿O solo lo puedo utilizar con uncountables. Yes. Yeah. You can use. Huh? Can you I? Can use you. Yes, you can. Okay. All right. Why why I can use there is with the countable? Okay. Because if you have one thing, you can say this is I, this A, -A or this is N. All right, yes, very good, yes, that's very good. So, I can use there is and there are with the countable nouns, but with the uncountable nouns, I can only use 
There is, and no more than that, okay? So before I move on, is there any questions so far? Well, silence said a lot. El silencio dijo mucho, so I'm going to move on. So, um, yes, here we have, uh, as it says, there are two kinds of nouns in English. Again, countable and non-countable. Here we have what I was saying before. Aquí es lo que, lo que les estaba diciendo antes, ¿verdad? Some words can be countable and uncountable, but with a little difference in meaning. ¿Qué significa? Que algunas palabras o algunos sustantivos pueden ser contables e incontables de las dos formas, pero con una, me, con una pequeña diferencia en su significado. We are going to see that later on, but here we have some examples. Aquí tenemos algunos ejemplos de nouns que pueden ser countables y uncountables. Example, the letter EG, la letra EG, es la abreviación de example. Okay, if I want to say example in English, I can just write down, sorry, example. I can only write down EG and that's the same thing, okay? So, uh, huevo. no, no, it's not egg. It's no es huevo because egg is with a double G, con una doble G, okay? And we have a period. Y porque acá también tenemos un punto, a period. It's not egg. So we have example, we have iron, we have cake, and we have chicken, and we also have time. Those are some examples of some nouns that can be whether countable or non countable. Okay. So let's move on with that. Teacher. Yes, go ahead. Teacher, pero tengo una pregunta. Este, en, la, en la presentación de la plataforma aparece eh, que el huevo mm -hmm. puede ser contable o incontable. Exactly. Y en, entonces. Ahí me entra la, la duda. Entonces se puede, no se equivoca uno, porque yo en un ejemplo que usted puso la vez anterior, uh -huh. yo le mencioné el huevo y usted me dijo que no, que el huevo era incontable. Entonces ahora me entra la duda porque dice que se, se puede usar en contable también. Eh, the, the reason about that is because... Uh, Dependiendo lo que tú quieras decir, lo podemos utilizar ya sea contable e incontable. Puede ser que el contexto en el que estamos hablando uh, en este momento sea solamente utilizado como uh -huh. contable, pero puede ser que el contexto en el que uh -huh. está en ese momento no pueda ser contable, pero sí pueda ser solo incontable. So that's why. Ese es el problema. Por eso dice acá que si lo, dependiendo del contexto donde lo utilicemos y si es contable o incontable, va a tener una pequeña diferencia. That's why it says here with a difference in meaning. Es por eso importante that we know how to use it. Que sepamos cómo utilizarlo y en qué contexto. Si no, podría cambiar y ya no podría ser contable o sí podría ser incontable. So it depends on the context. Okay. So here we have, aquí tenemos a list. Una lista de some countables and non-countable nouns. Some of them, as it says over here, they have both. Tienen ambos, right? They can be whether countable or non-countable. Example, we have in the countable part, I will need a volunteer. Any volunteer that would like to help me with the countable nouns? Sheila, go ahead. Um, countable. 
meal, potato. A, a burns a burden, burden. Yes, say it, and I will tell you that later. Go ahead. Eggplant. Mm. Omelette, brown, pizza, salad, tomato, be, uh, be, vegetal, vegetal, vegetable. vegetable. Okay, so uh, as you can see here, we have the word meal, potato, aubergine. Uh, I'm going aubergine. to. I'm going to explain you this difference, guys. Okay. In British English, in English Britannico, le llamamos aubergine a la, what's that? It's como morada. It's like purple, but it's the best. Berenjena. Oh, exactly. Berenjena. So in, in British English, we say aubergine. Le llamamos aubergine. But in American English, in Inglés Americano, we say eggplant, okay? So it's very important that you know both differences. See, if you are talking with an American person, están hablando con una persona americana or from the States or Canada, pero alguien que está en Europa, nunca les va a entender cuando ustedes digan eggplant. So they said aubergine. The decent aubergine a la misma cosa. So it's better for you to know the differences between they both or both accents. So we have the omelet, we have the prawn, we have pizza, we have salad, tomato, and vegetables. Uh, is there anyone that would like to help me with this part, the part of the middle? Any volunteer? All right. Go ahead, sir. Boom. Boom. Oh. Chocolate. Chocolate, coffee, salmon, fruit, chicken, coffee. Okay. So it says both. I told you last time, guys, that every time that we have a TH letter, the sound of the TH is going to be like como seta in Spanish, like both. Okay. Chocolate, we say chocolate, not chocolate. No, no decimos chocolate, we say chocolate. Chocolate, coffee, salmon, frit, chicken, and coffee. Those words over here, y vamos a agregar la que dijo Lisette here, because it's not here, egg, okay? We're going to add the word egg that can also be countable and non-countable depending on the context that we're talking about, okay? So what is important for you guys no, or what you have to do in, this, in these cases, you have to memorize those words, memorizar those words, okay? So because if not, that might be a little bit difficult for you to understand. Okay, so uh, I will need any volunteer with the uncountable nouns, please. Me. Go ahead. Broccoli, rice, juice, milk, sugar, salt, lettuce, spaghetti, curry, and food. Okay. Thank you. We have the uncountables broccoli, rice, juice, milk, sugar, salt, lettuce, spaghetti, curry, and food. Those are uncountable nouns. Okay. Is there any questions so far, or I can move forward, or can I move forward, guys? Well. So nobody said anything, so I'm going to move forward. See? So here we're going to have just kind of a review. Vamos a tener un repaso about a and some and any. 
So as you can see right here, it says, I can erase this part, okay. It says that we need, uh, with countable nouns, we use A when we have positive or, or we can use any in the negative. We use A when we have a, a consonant, consonant sound and we use N when we have a vowel sound. We can also use some in affirmative sentences and we use any with negatives and with questions. But that's with countables. Eso lo utilizamos con countables. What about uncountables? Que hay dos incontables. In affirmatives, you know, in affirmativos, we are always going to use some. And in the negatives, we are always going to use any. That goes with the uncountables. Eso pasa con los incontables. And always, we are using any with the questions, okay? So I think that this information, we already understood that. We're just going through this part just for you to remember. So there we go, aquí vamos, okay? When someone wants to know, cuando alguien quiera saber acerca de cantidades o de algo, the question that we are going to do, la pregunta que vamos a hacer es, how much? This one, esta pregunta la vamos a utilizar para uncountable nouns. Always uncountable nouns. How much? Okay, how much? Example, how much water do you drink? How much water do you drink? Posible respuesta a esta misma pregunta. I drink a lot of water. I drink quite a lot. I don't drink much or I don't drink, uh, let me see, I don't drink much water or I drink not much water. That's gonna be the same. So I can also say I drink, I don't drink any water, yes? So what is important in this part, guys, is that you know how to use those words, such as a lot, much, or any. Es importante que sepan cómo utilizar esas palabras, okay? Any, ya sabemos cómo se usa. A lot, ya vimos que solo se utiliza cuando. Con contables o incontables. A lot. Incontables. Uncountables. Un uncountable now. No lo puedo utilizar con countables. Countables. Lo puedo usar con countables o solo con uncountables. Uncountable. Are you sure? Segura. Como que se saca 10 en el examen ahora. But. Both. We can use it in both countables and non-countables, okay? So, now that we just saw how much, we are going to go with how many. How many, we are going to use it with plural countable nouns. Lo vamos a utilizar con los countable nouns, pero en la forma plural. ¿Por qué? Porque en la forma plural. How many significa cuántos. Cuántos y para decir cuántos yo no necesito que sea solo uno. Porque si yo le pregunto cuántos estudiantes hay y usted viene y me dice uno. Entonces en este caso no puedo decir, uh, no puedo utilizar la the question how many, how many students. O no puedo decir how many students. Por eso que lo utilizamos con la forma plural de los countable nouns. Example, how many students do you have? How many students do you have? Yo puedo decir not many students or not many. Or I can say, ¿qué otra forma podría contestar esta pregunta? 
if I ask you, how many students do you have? Um, a few students. A few students. Can I say that? Some students. Some students. They a lot of, of there they are can. no students. There are no students. Can I say that? Si yo quiero decir, yo tengo muchos estudiantes, how would I say that? ¿Cómo diría eso? How would I say that? How more students? No, if I want to say, yo tengo muchos estudiantes. I have most students. I have much students. I have a lot of. I have a lot of, or y si yo quiero decir, um, tengo algunos. I have too many students. I have too many students. I can say that as well. Another possibility, otra posibilidad. Too much students. I have some students. Some I have some students. No puedo utilizar too much porque estoy con la pregunta how many. ¿Sí? Si tuviera la pregunta how much, yo pudiera decir too many, too much. Pero aquí no okay. tengo how much. I have how many, okay? So let's make that clear. Thank you so much, guys. So here we have a brief explanation una explicación más detallada uh, about the use of a lot of, the use of um, many, and the use of much. So I will need a volunteer that would like to help me with the part of a lot of. Any volunteer? He said, go ahead. Uh, a lot of we use a lot of in affirmative and negative sentences and in question with both countable and uncountable nouns example I eat a lot of fish I drink a lot of milk. If I say I don't eat a lot of fish, will that be correct? Si yo digo I don't Not eat sure. a lot of fish. No. Will that be correct or not? Listen to what I'm saying. Escucha lo que estoy diciendo. I don't eat a lot of fish. Will that be correct or not? No. Not correct. Not correct. Not correct. No. Correct. Not correct. No. So, how would I say it? ¿Cómo lo pasaría yo a una forma negativa? I don't eat any fish. Great. Very good. Thank you so much for that. So, uh, can someone help me with the part of much? Any volunteer? See, I can see here. Two okay, go ahead, help me. <clears throat> we use much in negative sentences. In question, with incountable nouns. 
We never use much in affirmative sentence. Okay. Example, I don't eat much salt. Do you eat much salt? Yeah. Okay. I'll... Just leave it there. Thank you. So as it says over there, guys, we use much in negative sentence and we also use it for questions. We have here, I don't eat much salt. Do you eat much salt? It says that a lot of can also be used in these cases. Por eso es que les preguntaba anteriormente. Can I, puedo utilizar a lot of in negative? Lo puedo utilizar en negativo? Yes, I can. Si sí puedo, pero la forma más utilizada siempre porque es la forma, is the way, the, the formal way, la, la formal es any, but yo puedo utilizar a lot of también de una forma negativa, pero es un poco informal, ok? So, uh, what I need you to understand es que la forma en que nosotros nos vamos a basar siempre va a ser any, pero no significa que en más de alguna ocasión se puedan encontrar con alguien que está utilizando a lot of también de forma negativa. Ok. As we can see here, I don't eat a lot of salt. También lo puedo utilizar en pregunta. Example, do you eat a lot of salt? Yes, but this is very informal. Ok. Keep that in mind. Recuerden, says, okay, Maria Luz de Nieto, I saw that you raised your hand. Can you please help me reading the many part? Okay, many. That teacher? Oh. Um, no sé si lo leo yo, teacher. Yes, go ahead. O compartimos. Compartimos también, no sé. Of course, just you do the first part and Anna Yancy will do the, the, the last part. Okay. We use many and negative sentences and question with countable nouns. Okay, thank you so much. Now, Anna Yancy, go ahead. I don't eat many cakes. Do you have many books? Perfect. So as you can see here, guys, we use many. It says with negative and questions with countable nouns. As the examples right here, I don't need many cases. Do you have many books? But once again, una vez más, we have a lot of. También podemos utilizar a lot of. But what did I say? ¿Qué es lo que dije? ¿Cuál es el que nosotros vamos a utilizar siempre? Any. Any. Why are any. we going to use any? ¿Por qué vamos a utilizar any? Es la... Una forma más formal. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's the formal way to speak English. Proper English. We can also, en inglés, más propio, más formal, ¿ok? But it's mm -hmm. important, guys, that you know that también personas o en ocasiones se pueden encontrar con personas que utilizan a lot of, but that's a kind of informal speaking. So, uh, is there any questions so far, guys? So far, so good. Estamos bien hasta el momento. Yes. No yes. No yes. No. Ninguna pregunta. No. <coughs> no. Solo una, una pregunta, como aclarando, teacher. Go ahead, sir. Eh, cuando lo dice el, a lot of, que es informal, tanto va a ser como el contable como el no contable. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Okay. But, okay. but we can use them both. Yes. So it's up to you. Depende de ti. If you want to, to speak in a very formal way, you are going to use any, or if you want to use a lot of, it's up to you. It's your decision. Okay, gracias. Mm -hmm. Perfect. No questions? 
No question. Okay, if there's no questions, because we still have two minutes, we are going to work with this part and we are going to do it now. Lo vamos a hacer así. Vamos a ver si es cierto that you paid attention to the class. Okay, so let me see. We're going to start with uh, Lisette. Go ahead. In exercise letter eight, it says, write the question in short answer. In este caso, como no hay forma de escribirlo, uh, here we have an example. Are there any eggs? Con esta palabra, butter, necesito that you give me a question. And obviously the answer. Uh, are there are there many butter? Are there many butter? Mm -hmm. Is butter? Do you guys know what butter is? Uh, mantequilla. Mantequilla. So is that countable or non countable? Not countable. Uncountable. So. Um, Repeat it again. Are there some butter? <laughs> are there some butter? Or can I say, is there uh -huh. some butter? Puedo decir, are there or is there? Mm, are is there? there? Is there are... no plural? No plural. Mm. Como no, bueno, yo porque pienso que como es incontable, <laughs> pero no sé. So the other, the other, uh, the other ones, los otros, can I say, are there some butter or is there some butter? Some butter. Okay. There raise, is. Raise there is. Hand. There is. The, let me, let me write this down. Are there some butter or is there some butter? So, raise your hand. Levanten la mano si piensen que es la opción número uno. Are there some butter? Sí. Okay. Okay. ¿Cuál teacher si es cuál? The number one, la primera. Are there some butter? Raise your hand if you think that it, the first one it is correct. Okay. I can see some people right here raising their hands. What about number two? Can I say, is there some butter? If you agree, raise your hand. Ah, pues si me equivoqué, es, is there. Exactly. We have to say, is there some butter? Y la respuesta sería, what will be your answer? He said. Uh, sería, um, uh, yes, uh, there is. Yes, there is. Now we go with Elvis. Can you make a question uh, with number three? Are there any mushrooms? Are there any mushrooms? Very good. And your answer? Yes, there are. Very good. Now we go with Claudia Iraeta. Let's make a question with number four. Number four. Um, is there any beer? Is there any beer? What will your answer be? Yes. Is there? Yes, is there? Or yes, there is? There is, there is. Okay. Yes, there is. Now, Erica, go ahead with number five. 
art is there any some some cheese is there any cheese or is there some cheese is there some cheese okay and what would your answer be yes is is it just is it or just there is or there yes, are? There is. Okay. Now we're going to go with the Maria Luz de Nieto number six and the last one, Ana Maria seven. And we're going to finish with that, okay? Maria Luz de Nieto number six. Is there any. Letters. Letters. The answer. Yes, there. There is. Yes, there is. Ana Maria, the last one. Mm, are there some carrots? Are there some carrots? The answer. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, there are. Yes, there are. Okay. So, guys, uh, what I'm going to do, because we didn't complete all the exercises, I am going to share the presentation with you. And if you can work on the exercises for tomorrow, we are going to start with that tomorrow, okay? Because we didn't have enough time for today. And we are going to finish with that today. So thank you so much for attending to the class. And I hope to see you tomorrow at the same time by the same channel, okay? Have a good night. Good night. Good night, teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.